Tiago Mata as Juventus head coach is one of the most exciting things every football fan should watch next season. Wow! In this video, Vamosito will tell you about Mata's main principles that allowed him to take small Bologna to the Champions League, what we can expect from Juventus, and what transfers the young coach will make to bring the Serie A title back to Turin for the first time in five years. Let's go! As you probably already know, the hype around Tiago Mata is due to his tremendous success with Bologna. The Italian led a small provincial club to the Champions League for the first time in their history. Mata has been widely covered and his ideas have been recognized by other coaches. In particular, here's what Roberto Derby had to say about Tiago. Mata has brought something unique to Italian football. I've been studying him a lot. I had their matches sent to the tactical room because he intrigued me. We have different principles, but there is something in common, like controlling the games and the courage. Indeed, courage is a good word to describe Mata's football. He has succeeded by playing flashy, progressive, courageous football with the 14th most expensive squad in Serie A. Obviously, after such a breakthrough, Mata started to be hunted by top clubs. In the end, Juventus was the most quick-witted and managed to sign Thiago. Let's briefly go over the principles on which Mata built Bologna to better understand what to expect from Juve next season. First, there is the formation. Thiago uses 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. Moreover, he actively rotates between these two formations depending on the opponent. Mata occasionally uses man-to-man -man pressing, which Atalanta in particular is famous for. Thus, if the opponent has a double pivot, then Bologna will rather play a 4-3-3 formation so that the two eights can work against the double pivot. And vice versa, if the opponent has a single holding midfielder, then Mata will choose a 4-2-3-1. In this case, the 10 will chase this defensive midfielder. When building attacks, Thiago focuses on ball possession and attacking free spaces. Usually, the team finds the space between the opponent's fullback and Sancho back and focuses on it. Mata football is about a lot of pressing, movement in triangles, and running into free areas. This is confirmed by the following stats. In nearly two seasons under Mata, Bologna are in the top five for most passes per 90 minutes, while averaging 56% possession among all Serie A teams. As for triangles, they are formed mostly on the wings, when one of the central midfielders comes to help the fullback and winger. The midfielder and winger are constantly changing positions to confuse the opponent. The fact that Mata focuses on passing and attacking free spaces leads to a minimization of crosses. You will hardly ever see Bologna making crosses from the flanks to the penalty area. The team is third from the bottom among all Serie A teams in this regard. That is, in general, Thiago strives for combination football, creating overloads by shifting wingers to the center and waiting for openings to create chances. A special factor in Mata's success with Bologna is forward Joshua Zirgzi. Joshua and Thiago have become a real gift for each other. The coach managed to unleash the striker's potential to the fullest and the Dutchman thanked Mata with a great performances. Zirgzi, being a center forward, is actually a backbone player. He constantly drops back in search of the ball, creates a numerical advantage for the team, and opens up space for his teammates to make runs. Just look at his heat map this season. Does he look like a classic center forward? We should also mention his ability to play with his back to the opponent's goal. Zirgzi is able to keep the ball in a difficult situation and is great for passing play as well as being able to get out from under the pressure through dribbling. Priceless player for Mata. This style of play also explains the minimization of crosses from the wings. Nevertheless, Joshua manages to carry out his duties very well. This season, he has 12 goals and 7 assists in 37 matches. In the build-up, Bologna often use a 4-2-5 formation where the goalkeeper takes the place of one of the Sanchi backs, while the Sanchi back moves up and pairs with a pivot. However, in general, Mata's football is not about players' positions, but about constant movement and how to take the opponent by surprise, no matter whether it's at their own or the opponent's goal. I don't like the numbers of the field because they trick you. You can be super offensive with a 5-3-2 and defensive in a 4-3-3. 
I had a game a while ago where the two fullbacks ended up playing as the 9 and 10. Recently, Mata caused a media boom when he announced that his team was playing a 2 7 2 formation. For those who only heard these three numbers, the idea seemed wild and evoked different emotions. Do you think it's normal? Tiago simply suggested looking at the player's positioning by turning the field 90 degrees. Obviously, by having players of a much higher class at Juventus, Tiago will be able to better execute his football and the fans will enjoy the process. For Juve, Mata is a breath of fresh air because in recent years, the Bianconeri could be described in one word. Boring! It sucks. Boring, right? So boring. I want to kill myself. The team played uninspiring football, scored few goals, finished in the Champions League zone, but was far from winning Serie A. This is not what you would expect from a giant of Italian football. Guys, like this video if you are intrigued by Juventus under Mata next season. There is no doubt that Juventus, which has been playing with three centre backs for the past two years, will transform, particularly with transfers. Mata will be implementing his four defender system in Turin, and he will need some new players. Although the transfer window is not yet open, we can talk about Tiago's priority targets confidently. Target number one is Joshua Zirgzi. The Dutch forward, as we have already said, is essential for Mata's football. Especially since Juventus currently have no player who can perform the range of functions that Joshua does. Vlahovic is a classic centre forward, while Chiesa will return to the wing with the arrival of the new coach. The second transfer in should be, again, a Bologna player, but this time a defender. We are now talking about centre back Riccardo Calafiori, who made a huge breakthrough under Mata and was even included in the extended list of the Italian national team for the Euros. Tactical flexibility, ball handling, young age, top defensive skills – all this makes the Sanchez back such a desirable asset. Bild also reports that Juve consider inviting Mats Hummels as a free agent. The experienced German Sanchez back also meets Mata's requirements and could be a good option for the rotation. As a long-term replacement for Wojciech Szczesny, Juve will bring Mons goalkeeper Michele Di Gregorio, with whom they have already agreed on the contract terms. We should expect the arrival of a new attacking-minded central midfielder. So far, the best option for the Bianconeri seems to be Atalanta's Tune Coupe Miners, who will leave his club in the summer. La Gazzetta dello Sport reports that the dynamic midfielder prefers to stay in Serie A, so Juve have a good chance of signing the Dutchman. The right-back position also needs to be strengthened. Currently, Juve's captain Danilo can play there, but he is already 32 and they need another player, at least for rotation. The Turin site is currently being linked to sensational Girona defender Jan Koto. And the last position where Juventus need a top player is the right winger. Since the Turin side have recently played without wingers at all, the team has few options in this position. However, it's difficult to talk about a particular player now. Among the players available on the market are Takefusa Kubo from Sociedad, Michael Olise from Crystal Palace, Joan Bakayoko from PSV, and Mason Greenwood from Hetafe it's likely that the Italians will be willing to sign one of them. Of course, with the arrival of a new coach and new players, Juve will also have transfers out. In particular, there will be no place for Filip Kostic in the new formation. Zirgzi's arrival will trigger the departure of Milik or Keane, or possibly even both. Also, one of Adrien Rabiot, Weston McKennie pair, together with Alexandro, will leave the club. But those who can shine for Mata are the young Miretti and Yildiz. These two will definitely have a lot of chances, and even if they won't be starting 11 players, they will certainly be the first options off the bench. In general, Mata starting lineup at Juventus for the 2024-25 season after all the transfers may look as follows. Write in the comments what this team will be able to achieve under the one of the most promising coaches in the world and what transfers you expect from Juve. Vamosito channel was with you. Subscribe to us if you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye bye.